Well, again, you can't do this with current technology. So a lot of the work that's going on right now are people around the world thinking about new ways to build big radio telescopes. And we don't have time to talk about all these, but some very clever things are being considered. And the money to do this work is coming from both the private side and the public side. Uh, this particular set of telescopes is called the Allen Telescope Array. It's being funded by Paul Allen, who made a bunch of money in... Uh, I always forget which one he was. <laughs> Microsoft, thank you. Yeah, and he's he's put a serious pile of money into the Allen Telescope and yeah. other things, and and many other things. Yeah, and so people are thinking very carefully about how to do all of this, but it's going to be a while before this is sorted out. And I think people who would who are seriously involved in the SK now predict that it's it'll become at least three telescopes. So instead of being one telescope, it's probably going to become a low-frequency SKA, which would operate from the atmospheric limit, maybe 20 to 40 megahertz, up to um, eh, three or 400 megahertz. And then a neutral hydrogen SKA, which operates at about a gigahertz and includes the, the hydrogen line at 1.4. And then a high-frequency SKA, which is above that. So maybe something like 3 to 100 gigahertz. Because you can't build one radio telescope to do all those things, or at least nobody can think of how to do it right now. And they're all interesting, and the science is different in each one. This is an optimist view of what might happen time-wise. There are many places, many locations competing to have the SKA built. This is a site in Western Australia. And as you might predict, it's flat. Uh, and it's lonely. And so it's good. There's not a lot of radio frequency interference. And right now, the betting money is on something that will end up in Australia. The South Africans are really keen to have something. They are, they are pouring money into this at a surprising rate. Right? There's a long history of astronomy in South Africa. But the betting money is on Australia or South Africa for at least one part of it. We think it makes perfect sense that the very large array, expanded very large array, with some additional telescopes, and what we call, what we think of as the New Mexico array, could be a very nice prototype developmental, 10% developmental telescope for the SKA. Um, and the optimists think that there'll be at least one such telescope by 2014, and that it's plausible to talk about SKA being operational in 2020. I think the pessimists would say SKA will come to life in that decade, 2020 to 2030. Um, and we'll sort out how to do it between now and then. But a lot of work's going into it, and at least 18 countries are involved. So we've tried to, I've tried to give you a little bit of a sense of what's going on in radio astronomy, especially these, these wonderful projects that are moving the frontiers forward. There are lots of cool discoveries that have gone on in radio astronomy, mm -hmm. and I hope you'll stay tuned for the expanded very large array and the Atacama Large Millimeter Array and the Square Kilometer Array and, the, and those very scientific frontiers that they'll open. <coughs> Thank you very much for having me here.